everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we're tackling the real news, in case you were confusing this for another fake news video from earlier this week. We have some new stuff from the Wheel of Time production to break down, including an actual clip from the show, so this is exciting stuff. At the end of the video, I'll also be announcing a super cool contest with some real life prizes, so stay tuned to the very end of the video to find out how to enter and how you can win. Before we get to the news though, big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, but more on them a bit later. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to get more Wheel of Time content. That's what I do here. So let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with major spoilers running all the way through The Great Hunt, the second book of the series. If you have not finished book two of the series, then go ahead and finish that and come back. You have been warned. So let's get right into the news and let's start with some news that dropped a few weeks back that I even mentioned in my fake news video the other day. David Buckley, the man that was hired to score the Wheel of Time, apparently left the production back in October of 2020. Now, no reasons were given for his departure, and we've not really heard anything about a replacement, but I can only imagine that this was mostly a scheduling conflict. Now, remember that the Wheel of Time production was delayed last year due to COVID-19. Composers like David Buckley will typically have multiple projects planned, and my guess is due to the delay and the completion and then the filming, he was unable to score the episodes completely in the time that he had allotted for this project, and likely he had a conflict for 2021, and so they went a different direction. Now, obviously, there's no confirmation of this, but I would doubt that there were creative differences between the showrunners and Buckley. Now, this does explain a little bit about why we haven't heard any original music from the show yet in any of the teasers we've gotten. It would seem that the score is not yet completed, or it's just not ready for release. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not really super concerned for the show. Uh, typically, as we've talked about before, scoring is done at the completion of filming, we know that there are a few things they need to touch up and it's entirely possible that they have already either hired another composer and, and it's already done or that they have somebody in mind once the filming is completed entirely. Either way, scoring is about a three week to one month process. We have plenty of time. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. Now let's move on to our next piece of news and it comes in the form of some pictures. Now as reported by Wattseries.com, several photos of Dolsky Mlin have surfaced. I probably butchered that name, sorry. This location is an old mill in the Czech Republic that was used for filming in block one, or in other words, the first two episodes. The site is a location that's often used for filming for fantasy shows, like with Game of Thrones having filmed there before as well. Now these photos uh, have props lying around as you can see and this appears to be a campsite and given that we know that this is also where the wolf dogs filmed i think it can be safely assumed that this place is where perrin first meets the wolves or it could come when he and Egwene are separated from the group after shadar logoth now you can see in the pictures the bundles uh, and what appears to be blankets do you agree with me on the scene? Do you think this is where Egwene and Perrin meet the wolves? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now our next piece of news involves another leaked audition. And no, it's not Matt Hatch auditioning for Manfear. We'll get that one for you later. Now while there isn't a video for this one, as it was taken down, there is a transcript of the scene. We'll run through it and then we'll talk a bit about it. But as always, I want to warn you that these scripts are not always indicative of what we're going to get on the live show. There is no guarantee that the transcript is accurate, and it could just be made up lines to someone to read as they audition. That's extremely common, so take this with a grain of salt. This is not like gospel as the script or anything like that. Also, as always, some of the words and nouns uh, they used are changed to make it not so obvious, but they use some of the same code words that we've gotten in other leaks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the transcript. Now in this scene, there are four people present, the Naga Reborn, two people talking to him, and then the role that's being auditioned for, which appears to be a voice in the head of the Naga Reborn. So here's how it goes. Person one. No, come with me. Naga Reborn. Go. Voice. Kill them. Person two. You will never wear the silver crown. Naga Reborn. I don't want to. What does a crown mean to a Naga Reborn? Person two. You really believe it, don't you? Naga Reborn. You will too. Voice. Kill him. Be done with it. Person two, I sent word to the stone temple. The witches will come for you. Naga reborn, those women should be following me, not fighting me, but they're afraid, afraid that the Naga will break the world again, throw us back thousands of years, just like the last one did. They forget that the Naga is just as likely to save the world as break it. Voice, kill him, show your power. Naga reborn, is that your solution to everything? Person one, who are you talking to? You've gone mad already? Voice, Kill him. Kill him. So the Naga Reborn has been code for the Dragon Reborn throughout the leaks that we've gotten. 
I think it's safe to say that the Naga reborn in this case is Loghain. This video was uploaded in October of 2020, according to Watt series, which would somewhat correspond when there was filming going on in Segovia, Spain, and that's what we can assume were Loghain scenes. So I think this is more than likely Loghain. Now the scene appears to show him in the process of going mad from channeling as he's hearing voices in his head. Now we've heard other leaked auditions and that they're going to be showing Loghain showing some signs of madness probably in a way to show us what Rand will eventually be in for. We know that Loghain will have a larger role in the show based on previous interviews, so this is probably a glimpse into that larger role. What do you think of the scene? Do you think this is Loghain, assuming the script is real? Uh, let me know in the comments. Let's hit one more piece of casting news before we get to the main event. We've got some confirmation on one of the casting choices that we had heard a couple months back, back in October of 2020. We heard that actors Thomas Chaining, Sandra Yee Sincindiver, and Amir Chadra Patel were discovered to be a part of the cast and a part of Block 4 filming, which would imply that they were Shinarans. We now have confirmation, at least according to his CV, that Amir Chada Patel would be playing the role of Ingtar Shanoa. Now, obviously, Ingtar is a fairly big role from the books, at least for the story of The Great Hunt, but I don't necessarily think that this casting means that we're going to be seeing The Great Hunt be a part of season one. Keep in mind, Ingtar is introduced in the Eye of the World, so his presence makes sense, and it would be wise to build up his character a little bit now, especially considering the reveal of him being a dark friend at the end of The Great Hunt. I really think they want to add some character to him so that that actually has some impact. And I really hope they stick with that, uh, simply for fan reasons. I really want uh, to see Ingtar have this arc where he does end up redeemed. And I really, really hope there are some small, tiny, almost unnoticeable hints that he might be a dark friend in the show, but not necessarily told, just so we can kind of speculate and kind of know what's going on. I love that type of foreshadowing, and so I hope they drop very small hints, uh, even in season one. Now, Amr is most recently known for his work on the television show The Third Day on HBO, where he has the recurring role as a preacher alongside Jude Law. That show released at the end of 2020, and although I haven't seen it, it appears the role was large enough that he made it into five of the episodes. I was able to find some hilarious videos that he apparently made for YouTube. I have one linked in the description of the video. I laughed my ass off. I understand that this type of humor is not for everybody, but you can certainly tell he has a, a certain vibe to him. He's very talented. I'm curious what you all think of him as Ingtar. I'm certainly excited. Now, the last piece of news is the major stuff. Is Amazon just released a short clip from the show as a teaser and the big reveal of a major prop from the show. Now, before getting into that, I wanna take a minute and tell you about a service that I use every single time I'm on the internet, and it's something that you really should not go without. If you use the internet, safety, privacy, and basic internet freedom are some of the major things that you need to consider. Companies and internet providers not only track what you do and where you go, but they lock you out of content based on where you live. One thing that you absolutely need to do if you use the internet in really any capacity, and especially if you do things like online banking, is get a VPN service. A VPN protects your privacy, allows you to surf the web in safety, and allows you to cross national borders and watch content that is geo-locked. The great news is I've partnered with NordVPN, the number one provider of VPN services in the world. They are known throughout the world for safety. They provide, they don't do any form of logging at all, so your movements are completely safe and secure. And right now, for the next 50 viewers, you will get 68% off their two-year plan, which is a measly $3.71 a month for something that you should already have. All you have to do is click the link in the description of the video. Check it out now. Let's get back to the video. So let's tackle the main event here, and that was the clip that Amazon released this past week. This past Watt Wednesday, Amazon released a short clip that reveals a famous prop from the show, a mysterious line of dialogue, and a mysterious image that has a lot of people talking. So let me go ahead and play the clip through. It's a short clip, so I'm gonna play it a couple times in a row so you can get a feel for it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Make a deal. All right, let's make a deal. Now there is so much here. Let's start with my immediate reaction. The first thing I thought of when looking at this is that it felt very much like it was real footage rather than the conceptual things that we've been getting. The lighting and video quality, and not to mention the dialogue, indicate a real clip from the show. Now, despite the clip being 
incredibly short, there is a ton packed into this. And how cool is it that we're at the point we're starting to see clips from the show? I I'm pumped. So that has me really excited for what comes next, but let's go ahead and take a look at the video itself. The text that shows that the beginning reads, he moves toward it, blowing dust away. The iron is rusted and decayed and cracks as he opens the case. And inside, he sees something protected from the ravages of time, a ruby encrusted dagger. It must be worth more than anything he's seen before. He picks it up, looks at it, and then... All right, so then the, the writing stops there. So let's stop and break this part down. For one, this is certainly different than how it goes down in the books. In the books, Matt, Perrin, and Rand are in a treasure room filled with gold and other stuff laying around, and the dagger is just one thing laying in that pile of treasure. Here, it seems the dagger is being singled out more, being set in a case, not being surrounded by other treasure. It's sort of a focus. So I believe this could be for a number of reasons. First off, the dagger will probably be a larger focus in the show. One of the major criticisms you could lob at the first two books of The Wheel of Time is that Matt's relative uninvolvement in the plot and his lack of major character development. This gives him a focus, and by having the dagger be something that he consciously takes, and even the possibility that there's some type of deal with Mordeth, which we'll talk about in a minute, those kind of lend credence to this idea of giving Matt a bigger role or bigger focus in the show. Now, another thing you'll notice here is that this is a ruby-encrusted dagger, not a ruby-hilted dagger as in the book. Now, as pointed out by the Dragon Mount Twitter account in a pretty long Twitter thread, the reasoning for this is that the ruby uh, on the hilt, as described in the books, wouldn't be very visible to an audience on camera, as the hilt is not often visible when the dagger is being held. However, the ruby encrusted dagger will be much easier to be seen on the screen. Now, let's move on with the clip. The window appears to be the church at St. Winsalus that we know they filmed at early on in the filming. This scene, along with the title on the video as Where the Shadow Waits, pretty much tells us that this scene is taking place in Shadar Logoff, that that wasn't already obvious. We then move on to a shot of Matt's hands opening the box and taking the dagger. Now, with anybody doubting that these are Matt's hands, these are seemingly the same outfit that he's wearing in the picture that we have of him and Rand from way earlier in the filming. So I think this is pretty certainly Matt. And let's talk about the dagger itself. The dagger is in a sheath, so the blade isn't exposed in this shot, and as we mentioned earlier, the ruby is encrusted on the side of the dagger. I love the intricate work on the sheath and the handle for the dagger. The blade itself isn't quite as curved as you see in the chapter thumbnail or in the descriptions in the book, but I'm not sure that that matters too much, although I am certainly curious as the reasons for that change. One thing that is odd here is the voice of presumably Barney Harris as Matt saying, all right, let's make a deal. Now, this is not a line from the book, and it's certainly interesting giving the context of Matt picking up the dagger. This has led to a ton of speculation as to what the line might be for, who he might be talking to, from Pat on Fane to Mordeth to even one of the other boys. Now, I'll give my general thought here, and that is that this is not something that was uttered at the time Matt picks up the dagger. It's likely something that was edited in later, that dialogue was put in later, but it is in the same context. So, it's probably, in my opinion, Mordeth wanting to make a deal with the boys to keep some of the treasure and help him take it outside. That would be my guess if we're just going based off the books. The last thing I've mentioned here is the symbol that shows up at the end. I probably would have missed it if not for the description on Twitter saying that the video ends with something mysterious. Now that line certainly not only implies that there is something to look at here, but also that it was left deliberately mysterious and was put there with purpose to cause discussion. Well, it has certainly succeeded at that. There have been people online saying that it's the imprint of a dragon and many other things. I think a lot of these guesses are as good as any others. I don't think there's really any definitive way we can tell what this is. The only thing that I'm going to add to that discussion, though, a lot of the proposed ideas are based around dragons and Rand, and I would think that given the context of the video, the sign would have something to do with Matt. I feel like it's a snake sign for some reason, just because it has to do with Matt. So maybe is it, it's an allusion to snakes and foxes. Again, it doesn't make a ton of sense but I just feel like that symbol has to do something with Matt. Anyways, I have some general thoughts overall. If you want, by the way, a super deep breakdown of the clip, going through every little screen, all of that stuff, check out Unraveling the Patterns video on the subject. It is outstanding and thoroughly detailed. Unraveling the Pattern is a channel that I frequently collaborate with, and we have an upcoming edition of our battle series where we're going to tackle the Battle of Falma in a visual way. I, I know a lot of you are excited for that. I will have his video about the clip and his channel linked in the description of this video, so make sure to check that out. But my general thoughts on the release. First, I love that we have actual footage from the show, even as short as it is, and that makes me feel excited that we're about 
to really see a Wheel of Time show, guys. Like, it's real. This is happening. We just saw a clip of Matt's hands, and we heard his voice on screen. That's awesome. Second, we're starting to get a bigger picture of the adaptation and some of the small changes that will come with it. So far, I have seen nothing that has me super concerned, and I expect major changes. So maybe that's why I'm not too worried about the dagger not being extremely curved or the ruby being in a different place. There are reasons for this stuff. It's, it's there to make it easier to see on screen. It's there to make a better adaptation so we understand the characters. So none of those things are a big deal to me. It seems that they are trying to highlight Matt's character more through just seeing the dagger uh, being more of a focus. And I think that that's a good thing is Matt is a fan favorite in the book, so he should be a fan favorite in the show. So let's give him a bigger focus. My last thought here is that these releases are getting closer and closer to teaser territory. And I think that this clip was cut from a larger trailer anyway. That was actually what the last image made me think of at the end of the clip, was that this was cut from a larger clip. I think that there are teasers and trailers being put together right now, and I think that the marketing will pick up as we're inching closer and closer to the day where the show might be released. I can't wait for more marketing stuff. I, I don't know about you all, but I'm pumped about it. What did you all think of all of the news stories? Please let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more Wheel of Time content. I've got news videos, I've got lore videos, we're doing a reread series through the books with visuals and maps. Check that out. Also, so I teased a contest earlier on, it's time to talk about that. I'm going to be giving away two free t-shirts from thegreatblight.com to two lucky winners in a contest that I'm going to run over the next week. How do you enter? It's easy. I'm running a poll of sorts for the community for an upcoming project. And I'm going to bribe all of you to fill out my poll questions by running a contest to give away some t-shirts. So here's how you do the poll. First, you have to like this video and leave a comment on it. I don't care if it's as much as comment. I'd love to actually hear more than that, but leave a comment. That's required to enter. Then you need to join my Discord server, which is actually super simple, by the way, if you're not a Discord person. You just click the link in the description of the video. It completely runs you through the process. You make an account. Cool. Then, once you're in my discount, there is a channel called Contest. Head there, and you will tell me your first name, your favorite book in the series, your least favorite book in the series, what you are most excited about for the show, and then finally, tell me your Wheel of Time story. What do I mean by that? I want to know how you found the books. Maybe a story of what they mean to you in a special way, or maybe even how they've impacted your life. There will be information in the Discord about this, so you don't need to remember it all from here. Just join the Discord server after watching the video and find that channel and enter your info and then you're in. Also, you have to have liked this video again, just a reminder, left a comment here as well to be entered. Now in a week, I'll pick two random winners and contact you on Discord so you can pick out your shirt. That's it. So make sure to get yourself joined in the contest. Make sure also to check out NordVPN as well and check out the Patreon if you want to financially support not only the YouTube channel, but thegreatbite.com. We have a major update coming soon to the website, so we are working towards that and super excited about what this will mean for the community. Thanks to all of you who already contribute and support the channel and the website. I couldn't do this without you. Special thanks to Darius Sadai for partnering with me on the website and helping financially as well, and putting in work to help make this wiki come to life. Thank you to everybody for watching, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?